Welcome to Behind the Bars TV. Hope everybody is fit and well. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Baby P's killers. And the one in particular is Stephen Barker. And now he is due to come up for parole. And that's the reason why I'm talking about this case. Because when I've been researching up in the news about prison topics, this is one of the ones that popped up. And he is now up for parole. So Stephen Barker is the killer of Baby P, along with two other defendants, who was Tracy Connolly, and the other one was called, we had a second, because I'm forgetting his name, I know it's Owen. So the other one is Jason Owen, but Tracy Connolly and Jason Owen are now out of prison. Now, Baby P was killed in 2007, and I'm sure the majority of you, if not all of you, will remember this case. The little boy was only 17 months old when he was killed in London in 2007. And it's one of those cases that shocked the nation because, because of the age of, it, of the young boy and because of how it happened and because it was done by such a horrible monster. Stephen Barker, I mean, along with the other two as well, but the main culprit in this one was Stephen Barker and his mother, Tracy Connolly, was also involved. She is just as much to blame for letting this go on. <clears throat> but the reason why I'm bringing this to attention today is because Stephen Barker is up for parole again. And it says in the headlines that he could be freed from a prison. And I'm bringing this to the attention because I'm going to talk a few facts about it. And just let everybody know before I get further into the video that Stephen Barker will not be getting released by the parole board. And I'll tell you my reasons why shortly. But he's now been in prison for... 17 years, I believe. And his original sentence was, believe it or not, you only got 12 years for the killing of Baby P. But he's doing a life sentence because he was also, he had two separate trials. He had one for the killing of Baby P, which he received 12 years for. But then he was also on trial for the S assault I'm not saying the words on here because YouTube isn't very friendly with those type of words and my video will be taken down or will not be monetized. As crazy as it sounds, that's what's happening with YouTube. A lot of my videos lately that I'm putting a lot of work into, costing a bit of money as well with the graphics and everything, aren't getting monetized, which is highly unfair but that's just how it's happening with youtube they don't like you talking about controversial topics so the other trial was for the rape of a little girl now i'll just get the facts on because i've got everything up in front of us i've got a few different articles up but i will keep going over it and referring to these just so i don't have any mishaps because as much as I've looked over this and I remember the case, there's a lot of bits to it that I don't remember exactly. And I don't want to be giving out false information. So the other trial that Barker was found guilty on was for the S assault on a two-year-old girl. Now this is the sentence that he was sentenced to life imprisonment for with a recommendation with a minimum sentence of 10 years and the 12 year sentence was to run concurrently so what that means is obviously he's got life with a minimum term of 10 years that he has to serve before he's eligible for parole and the 12 year sentence for baby p which a lot of you myself including will find unfair the fact that he got a 12 year sentence for the killing of baby p but that was to run concurrently. Now, concurrently means run alongside that sentence, which in actual fact means that you don't really serve that sentence. Because he's serving the life sentence, 
the 12 year sentence that runs concurrently means <clears throat> it runs alongside that sentence. So he doesn't serve extra time for that. He's just got to serve his 10 year sentence or his minimum 10 year. If it was consecutively, which it should have been, then he would have had to serve that on top. But this is what happens when you've got to, when you're getting sentenced for two things at the same time. The highest sentence, which is the life sentence, is the one you serve. The other one goes concurrently. But it should have been mixed in together, and he should have gotten a 22-year life sentence. That's my thoughts, and that's my opinions. And I'm sure you, the viewers watching, will think the same. He should have been given a minimum of 22 years for the killing of that poor little baby. But again, that's what happens in the court of law. These things happen, <clears throat> runs concurrently. But getting back to the case, that the life sentence, he got more for the life sentence for, the, for what he'd done to the two-year-old girl than what he did for killing baby P. Now, Tracy Connolly and Owen, Jason Owen, were given IPP, which is an indefinite or imprisonment for public protection, which is an indefinite sentence. Now, this is why there's a lot of controversy around the IPPs, because as much as everybody's pushing for, or the majority of people, MPs included, are pushing for resentencing of the IPPs, if the IPPs were given out properly to people like this, then they would have worked. That's why it's quite difficult to try and get people resentenced because there's people like this that deserved it, that should be on IPP. But Tracy Connolly was given IPP with a minimum term of five year. And that's what she had to spend in before she'd be eligible for parole. And Jason Owen was given IPP with a recommendation that he serve three year. But guess what? He went up in front of the appeal courts to appeal against his sentence. He actually won the appeal and it was it went from a three-year IPP to a normal six-year sentence. So after three years, he's automatically released. <clears throat> now, Jason Owen, as, even though he didn't take part in it, he knew it was going on and he didn't do anything to stop it or prevent it. Tracy Connolly knew fine well what was happening, what was going on. That's why she was given jail with a minimum of five years. But she's now out living in a hostel, I believe. And when I looked up on the case, she actually been recalled back to prison not long after she got out. And guess what that was for? It wasn't to do with children, but she was actually selling pictures of herself, nude pictures of herself on the internet, which was breaking her license conditions and she was recalled back to prison. Now, Stephen Barker has been in for 17 years. Obviously, he had them two offences, two charges, and he's been up for parole on a few occasions. And he's been, obviously, he's been knocked back on the parole because he's still deemed a danger to children and the public. So when he's been coming up for parole, the reason why he's been getting knocked back when I've looked up into it is because he won't take part in the S offender courses to reduce his risk of doing further harm to members of the public in an S manner. I'll not say the word as I've just commented before. Why? But um, he's, I've tried to find out which prison he's in just online, just so I get the facts right on here. But he's still in a high security prison, I believe, when I've looked up the last time he went off for his parole here, which was two years ago, he was still in a high security prison, which more than likely is Wakefield Monster Mansion, where he rightly deserves to be housed along with the other monsters, because that's exactly what he is. Now, when he comes up for parole this time, he'll not be getting released for the simple fact he's in a high security prison. Lifers do not get released from high security prisons. They have to go down the categories, category B, then to category C, then to a category D open prison so they can prove that they can behave in an open prison, 
the worn out scorned, they've had outside visits, they've been on the outside getting adjusted back into the community and see how they respond before they're released. But this monster is still in a high security prison. So if anybody's watching this case and watching him coming up for parole and worrying that he might be getting out, he will not get out, believe you me. He's still in a high security prison. He's refusing to do these courses to reduce his risk. So he will not get released. But he has also become under attack whilst in prison, which is rightly so of the other inmates because of what he's in for. Everybody will understand that other inmates that aren't in for them type of offences will want to get their hands on him because that's just what happens in prison. It's prison politics. It's, it's not even just prison. It would happen out here in the community. Even general members of the public, if they knew where he was, if they were related to the case or anything. This is just what happens with these type of predators. They will become under attack from the public, from prisoners, and it's all to do with the cases that they're in for. But when I've looked up on it, he was attacked in the high security prison. It didn't say which one, but he was scalded, and it wasn't long after he'd been in prison. <clears throat> Obviously, when the case is more in the public light, the public interest, the prisoners that are in the same prison as him, on the same landing as him, and they're not in for the same offences as him, some of them are down there on protection because they've been involved in drug debts, and the other inmates in general population or on the normal location landings or wings have been sent down for their own protection because of getting into debts through drugs or whatever, or they've snitched on the inmates and they've been sent down there for their own protection. When these inmates come across these type of inmates, this is when they come under attack. And this is what I believe happened. He got scalded with some hot water and sugar, and it's called a jugging in prison. Sometimes it's done with oil, but this is what happened to him when he was in a high security prison. But he, um, he also, it said that he's been attacked in other prisons, but it doesn't go into detail, so I'm not going to talk about that. I'm only going to talk about facts that I know about of research in the case. But it's not just other inmates that's down there for their own protection that have been involved with drugs or whatever who were on normal location. Some of the inmates that are down there for protection because they're in for S offences against women look at themselves as more or not as bad as these type of inmates. And these are the ones that actually act out their own prison justice. Because a lot of the murders that I've covered that have happened in prison have actually been S offender on, on S offender. And that's because they don't look at themselves as being as bad as them. So they're acting out their own prison justice because they think they're, they're in the hierarchy on the S offender wings on the pub, on the, on the VP, which is the vulnerable prisoner wings. But I just thought I would cover this case and let everyone know what is going on with it. And if anyone is worrying or having doubts in their minds that this animal might be getting released back into the community, then I just thought I would cover the case and put a few facts in the public limelight to let people know what's going on inside the prison and the fact that he will not be getting released because he hasn't done his courses. He's still in a high security prison and he's still a danger to the public. But I'll leave that one there for now, people. Hopefully you enjoyed that bit of content. But if you are enjoying it, remember, people, to comment, like, and subscribe. Take care, everyone.